Hi, welcome. This is Cambridge House Live. My name is Jonathan Roth. I'm joined now by Tom Calandra. He's a legend in this business in his own right for sure. Tory Hills Capital, babybulls.com, and you are the co-founder of CBS Market Watch. Thanks, Jonathan. So thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure. Off the top, you wrote recently that you think that May 17th, uh, the, the Mel's equities have been totally killed in the last little while, but you think that May 17th marked the reverse in the trend, that we might be looking at something more positive. What happened there and where are we going? Yeah, I think it was around May 17th, uh, certainly about eight or nine trading days ago. Today's June 2nd or June 3rd. And um, th that was a day when uh, all of a sudden, you know, the GDXJ, uh, the Venture Index, uh, in, uh, uh, that represents the, 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 the most speculative stocks in Toronto. Uh, hit a low, a nine-year low. Uh, you have to remember, for 14 or 15 months, we had declining volatility, declining liquidity. And finally, on that day, we saw lows that we haven't seen in nine years, approximately, since about 2003. And now, last... Uh, Last ten or tw last ten trading days, we've had a lot of volatility. We've never seen that low again. As you know, last week was uh, what I think will turn out to be a, a, a historic week. We had a sharp uh, up on Monday in the metals equities, then down again, up down. But Friday was spectacular. Gold up sixty-five dollars. The uh, GDXJ and the venture index is up about six to seven percent. So it's going to be nuts from here on out. You're going to see days like perhaps tomorrow. Monday, where gold's down 50 bucks at the open, gold itself, then up 100 to close the day. Uh, you always have these rocky, crazy, volatile um, uh, 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 rebounds off of bottoms. And, and I think, Jonathan, the metal equities will follow suit. So you, you think the precious metals over this next little while, you're bullish, obviously. Oh, yeah, next stop. Big time. Yeah, next stop anywhere from 2,100 to 3,000. Who knows? And, and I think, once again, the mid-tier metals equities, the ones, the, the ones that are mid-tier juniors that are represented by the Kinrosses of the world uh, and the uh, GDX market vectors index, those will have already rebounded. They're all 10 to 12 percent above their highs. And then the penny dreadfuls, as Tom McNeil from 49 North calls them, the penny dreadfuls will follow suit. You think that they will? Yes, so you're, you're bullish on juniors as well right now? Yeah, and I'm this fully committed. This is a good committed. time to get in. I'm fully committed. I mean, I, I've been throwing monies at, uh, at these things uh, all the way down since the, uh, since the peak, the recent peak of March of uh, 2011. I've done what, what probably you shouldn't do, is to continue to buy these things on the way down. Right. And they've gone lower and lower and lower. And now I'm almost out of money. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, I, I'm not going to go anywhere further down that road. Now, question for you. Citigroup, back in April, said that they, that they felt that there was a real potential that the commodity super cycle was over. Yeah. You obviously don't buy into that. No, I, I don't think so. You know, um, I think oil may have problems here. Right. And I think we could have selective deflation, Jonathan, well, in some commodities. I, and, I, you I know, we've say, been seeing how far, some deflation. How far down do you think oil could go? Oh, I, I think oil could go down to uh, 75 or $70 a barrel. Yeah. And I think you have to distinguish uh, Brent from uh, 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 Texas. Uh, WTI. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I, I'd see oil going down another 10%. I think there could be some commodities that could get rattled a little. Mm -hmm. Molybdenum has been tough right here. Uh, nickel hasn't had it easy. But I think when you're looking at copper, gold, silver, uh, uh, I think platinum's going to stage a huge rebound here. And uh, once again, I think you could see selective deflation in lots of assets, right. but not gold. Right, interesting. Okay. So gold itself, I mean, it hit historic highs. It dropped back down. We saw it pop on Friday a little bit. Where do you think it's going to go here over, let's just say, over the next six-month window? Well, the physical commodity itself, uh, I think by, by uh, we're in June, so by the end of 2012, I, I'd, uh, I'd, I'm going to just go right out there and say I, I think it's going to be above $2,500 an ounce. Really? And it's about $1,625 right now. Yeah, I mean, I hate to predict. It's yeah. the one thing I kick myself well, about. Well, you're a commentator. That's what you do. That's, that's your job. That's the only thing extent. people remember, right? Right, right. So, and, um, you know, my money is always where my mouth is. I mean, I own 32 gold equities. I wish I owned more gold. But I've been adding gold, uh, silver, copper, and uh, not so much copper, but uh, silver, gold, and platinum, physical, uh, to our portfolio at home periodically. 
uh, you know, it's easy to buy gold these days and fun, and you don't worry about it as much as you do the metals equities. Right. right. Now the euro situation, to what degree is that going to impact commodities, especially if Greece leaves? Well, you know, you look at the euro price of gold, it kind of gets, uh, uh, it, it gets weird trying to figure out, well, what is the, the euro price of gold, the price of gold denominated in euros? Let's face it though, as the euro continues to go lower and lower and dissolve, uh, uh, um, uh, the price of gold becomes more attractive, especially if you own gold in dollars. So once again, there's a little pool going around here, the hall. You know, I think, you know, we have about 150, 160 companies at Joe Martin's Cambridge house here. And uh, I've run into a number of people who are, who are betting, Jonathan, well, when is, uh, when is Greece going to leave the uh, euro? I think the bet should be more, uh, when is the euro going to officially dissolve? And really? I think, you in think the, that's what's going to happen? Yeah, in the next 12 months. Euro like officially, has, I mean, we had, Dan has to dissolve. we had Daniel Park up here and she said that she, she has a feeling that Germany may just leave and the euro remains, at, you know, to Good. some extent, some of the maybe southern European countries. But you think the whole thing's just going to go by the wayside? Yeah, side. I think so. I mean, you know, you get these, you know, whether it's the strong countries or the weak countries, you leaving the euro. Right. Once one country leaves, right. you know, the cracks are already there. Right. And basically, it's already, it, the market will, regardless of that, the, 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 the market will, will regulate the euro until it becomes irrelevant, sure. and uh, and l let's hope it continues to become irrelevant so I can finally buy some of that uh, real estate in the south of France that our French-speaking <laughs> kids, which is true, right. uh, uh, desire. Well, that, as you say, that might be happening sooner as opposed to later. All right, so staying with what's happening internationally here, geopolitically, it, you have an interesting approach in terms that you don't really look at geopolitics when you're looking at investing which is an interesting approach. We talked about that back in January. Moving ahead here, there are some really interesting opportunities in places like South Sudan, brand new country, a lot of political you know, instability there, but obviously huge opportunities. Venezuela is another interesting situation. Chavez is apparently on his last legs, could be dead within a couple of months. That's another interesting place. Libya or Egypt, these kinds of places that are really risky. Are you looking at places like that right now? Yeah, I mean, I own Tigray in uh, Ethiopia. I've been there. Uh, I was there last summer. Uh, that's, that's a good proxy for uh, southern Sudan. It's, it's kind of tough to get into southern Sudan right now with anything publicly sure. owned for the retail investor. Right. I think also some of the stuff in Eritrea, right? Nevsun, for example. Yeah. Very attractive. So Nevsun's still appealing to you. I know they ran into some issues a couple oh, months yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think Nevsun. I mean, uh, they got something real there, so. Yep. May, they may not benefit from being first into Eritrea, mm -hmm. but that, but that, uh, you know, the gold belt in Eritrea is uh, tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as far as Africa goes, I love, uh, I still like Tanzania, even though I'm, I'm getting my head, my head literally handed to me on Canico. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I love West Africa. You mentioned, uh, Jonathan, a uh, couple of other countries. What were they? Egypt? Uh, Venezuela is an interesting okay, one. Venezuela. Chavez is, Thank you know, you. I mean, if he passes away, this is this is a real potential opportunity with a lot of risk. Yeah. You know, there are three or four companies still that are negotiating with the Venezuelan government over the collapse of, uh, of um, um, Kilometer 88, it's called, and uh, some of the holdings there because the government... Uh, the government of Venezuela expropriated those right. things. Nationalized. Yeah, and I think they're worth looking at. I mean, if you look at Gold Reserve, which actually trades, I don't own it, but if you look at it, I own one of the other ones, I'm not going to mention it, but uh, if you look at Gold Reserve, it trades on the New York Stock Exchange based on the possibility or the probability that it will get some kind of settlement from the Venezuelan government right. for the uh, appropriation of its kilometer 88 assets. And there were at least three other companies in there. Wow. So, you know, you look at that, that's high risk, high reward. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I've got, I've called it wrong on a few countries, huge. Sure. But yeah. like I said, I'm not. Uh, You're not shy about these kind of I go in. Mali, yeah. I've gotten destroyed. Yeah. Mali, yeah. right? Yeah. The warlords returned from Libya. I knew they, you know, we all knew they were going to. Right. Who knew they'd get lucky in Mali? Yeah, and take over the whole country. Yeah, and right. take over the country. And yeah. my uh, my poor African gold group, which I still own every share of, mm -hmm. is down to 20 cents from a dollar where I was buying it. Right. And I feel for those guys, but because they're, you know, uh, Pierre Lalonde and Mikey uh, Nikiforic and uh, 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 Keith Downing, they're all there on site. Yeah. And uh, there, there's been not any interruption to their uh, fantastic project. 
in Mali, African Gold Group, AGG, but like I said, the stock's down 80%. Right, It's right. the same company. Yeah, well, it's based on bad news. My understanding is the new government in Mali is going to continue what the old one was in that way, in terms of resources. Oh, please. That's, no, that's, that's that my be, understanding in terms of so what, what I've read. Okay, now let's move on to uh, Colombia. This is a place where you just were, like just we within the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. What's happening down there? Well, Medellin, which is uh, that part of Antioquia, it's the city, the city, the capital of Antioquia, that I'm most involved with, uh, with uh, uh, three companies. And, um, and also some of these companies are uh, clients of ours at uh, Baby Bulls and, and Tory Hills. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, Medellin is hopping. You have to remember the Colombian currency, the peso, is among the best two or three performers against the dollar in the past five years. I mean, five years ago when I wow. first, Jonathan, when I first started returning to Colombia, mm -hmm. I lived there briefly right. when I was an English teacher in 1982, mm -hmm. right, Medellin, mm -hmm. totally different city back I then. I bet it was, yeah. 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 And, um, <laughs> Completely different. And, um, you and Pablo. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a story there. But, but um, the, 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 uh, the peso has done terrific and it's a booming economy. And you can find these economies across the world. I think Cambodia is booming. Uh, you know, I think parts of, of Latin America are, are booming. Costa Rica, as we know, is booming. Nicaragua is really starting to kick butt. Mm -hmm. And Colombia is kicking butt. Panama is starting to get it in gear. And the city of Medellin was hopping. You know, sometimes things, uh, events, lift a veil over a country at the same time that economic, good economic things are happening. Right. I think that whole thing with the Secret Service in Cartagena right. Right. lifted a veil off of Colombia. Right. You know, uh, there is not a, really a taboo about uh, uh, prostitution in, in parts of Colombia. In fact, it's, it's kind of uh, socially accepted. Right. And in fact, in, in, in parts of the country, it's legal as long as you go to a legal brothel. Sure. But I, I, I think what's happening is you have a, a great pride and work ethic in Colombia. And, and some of the companies in Antioquia, whether it's the uh, Antioquia Batholith or what's called the Middle Cauca Belt, are the next world leaders in terms of uh, uh, world-class deposits. Uh, uh, of course, the best one, Continental Gold. I don't own it, but I'm very close to the ownership and, and the uh, operators, including Bob Allen at Grupo de Bullet. Uh, Columbia Gold, uh, uh, Continental Gold Fields has the most amazing high-grade project at Politica. And then, and then it hasn't hit, been hit too hard. It's still down 35% from its high. But the two I'm, I'm identified with are Bellhaven, uh, BHV, which is also in the uh, Middle Cauca, uh, and, uh, and uh, Solvista Gold, another Bob Allen company. And its shares, uh, you know, have been uh, uh, shaken up by this uh, correction. Right. or what I call this bloodbath. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all, uh, you know, proceeding as if nothing happened. They're all well-funded and have plenty of cash for the next few years. And I think it's going to be exciting. So the FARC is not an issue in Colombia anymore? To well, in parts of... Uh, I mean, there are regions, obviously, but in terms of really being a part of the political discourse there, they're fading. I think in parts of Colombia, the FARC is still uh, a slight factor, but nowhere in Antioquia, which is the most prolific gold belt in the country. More li mining licenses are issued in Antioquia, Antioquia than anywhere else. And, you know, if you pick the right company, whether it's uh, Continental, Bellhaven, Sol Vista, there, I'll name a couple just to be fair, Sunward. I don't have any ownership or any a client ties to Sunward. Fantastic po uh, project, once again. They'll be revising their resource this month of June, just as uh, Bellhaven will. Um, what else? What looks fascinating right now and cheap, and they've uh, turned over their management, looks like they're getting a fresh start again in Seafield. Uh, uh, they have a, a, a deep porphyry, uh, just like uh, Sunward and Bellhaven. Plenty of opportunities. There's some real opportunities there. And then if you want to uh, uh, shift over to uh, uh, another part of the world, I love Cambodia right now, Angkor Gold. I just saw uh, Adrian Mann, the geologist, walking by. You know, 68-year-old white. Uh, he says he's from White Rhodesia. That's how old he is. You know, he's from South Africa. Right. And um, uh, Angkor Gold. Uh, my, um, uh, uh, I, I don't want to call any of these people friends because sometimes bad things happen. But uh, I will say, my friend Mike Weeks runs the runs the company, and uh, Angkor Gold, A N K. I've uh, been there 
They do a lot of great things for the community also. And I try to get involved with the schools. And I put my English teacher cap back on. And I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that something like Cambodia, Laos, uh, uh, Vietnam, we'll see some terrific new projects come out of those areas. So I, right now, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Cambodia, Colombia, uh, uh, Panama, uh, Ghana, uh, Mali, Ethiopia, Tanzania. And where's the best place for people to track you down in terms of finding more about these oh, opportunities? Oh, I think probably babybowls.com yeah. yeah. or Joe Martin's uh, Cambridge Cafe. Right. And I'll write there. Yeah, that's a great spot. Yeah, because I want people to know that I'm available for free. Yeah. Uh, I have no strings attached to uh, any of these things. The only yeah. way I make money these days is through Tory Hills, which is uh, which does investment relations mm -hmm. for these companies, but no requirement to use Tory Hills with anything I do. So Good it's all free. All right. Well, listen, appreciate your time and look forward to the next time. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you.